Okay, I just wanted to make a quick video on the method of undetermined coefficients. So what is this and when do you use it? Uh, this is used to solve uh, non-homogeneous non-homogeneous linear DEs uh, with constant coefficients with constant coefficients in a particular case. So it's used to solve non-homogeneous linear differential equations with constant coefficients when, and this is important, when the right-hand side, RHS means right-hand side, is one of the following. So one, uh, the right-hand side could be a polynomial. So a polynomial. A polynomial is a finite sum of, of powers of x, of integral powers of x. For example, 2x cubed plus x. That would be that would be a polynomial. So if the right hand side of your differential equation is 2x cubed plus x, uh, then you could use the method of undetermined coefficients. Uh, 2 uh, e to the ax, where a is a number. You can also have a constant here, for example, k e to the ax. So an example here would be 3 e to the 2x. So if 3 e to the 2x is on the right hand side of your differential equation, and it matches uh, what's written here, non-homogeneous linear uh, with constant coefficients, then you can use this method here. Three uh, trig functions like sine, let's say sine beta x, and cosine beta x. And more importantly, any linear combination of, of these three guys. So any linear combo of the above. So if you have a non-homogeneous linear differential equation with constant coefficients, and the right-hand side is a polynomial, an exponential function like e to the 3x, e to the 5x, e to the negative x, and the nice trick functions like sine and cosine or any linear, linear combination of the above, you can use the method of undetermined coefficients. Let's look at some quick examples to show you how this works. So example. So let's see. Can we use undetermined coefficients? So for example, let's look at y double prime plus uh, y equals 5 sine x plus e to the 2x, just making it up. Okay, in this case, yes, this is okay. Here we can use the method of undetermined coefficients. What about something like y double prime plus y prime equals uh, 6e to the 3x minus x plus 10 plus the sine of 1999, that was 15 years ago, at least from the making of this video. Uh, okay, no problem there, right? We have an exponential, a polynomial, and a sine function. So everything is okay. What about something like this? y double prime plus y prime equals the natural log of x. In this case, this is no, right? Not okay. So not okay. Here we cannot use the method of undetermined coefficients. Here you would probably use something like a uh, variation of parameters. That would be a good, a good first try. Uh, maybe something like this. 1 over x plus the secant of x. In this case, this would be a no. You cannot use undetermined coefficients. So again, you have to have you know e to the 3x, e to the 2x, uh, e to any power, sines or cosines, and polynomials. Uh, those will all work. Uh, let me give you the steps in case you ever want to you know do one of these on your own. In a future video, I'll, I'll do some examples. But in this video, I just want to focus on how to do the problem. Once you know how to do the problem, then it's just a matter of doing it. So the first step when you're solving a differential equation using this method is to solve the associated homogeneous DE. So you want to solve the associated homogeneous differential equation. So you basically set your differential equation equal to zero and its solution is we call it y sub c. Uh, sometimes people call it the complementary function or the complementary solution. So complementary solution. It's also called the, the complementary function. So the first step is you set your differential equation equal to zero and you find y sub c. The second step, this is the hard step. So this is where 
uh, the trouble comes into play. You have to make a guess. Yeah, it sounds scary. We're guessing uh, for the particular solution y sub p. So is it a guess? Yeah, yeah it is, but we're going to try to take guessing out of the equation. Uh, so we're going to try to avoid that. 3. Uh, if, this is key, if there is repetition between y, the terms of yc, hard to say this. If there's repetition between the terms of YC and YP, what, what you do is you have to uh, multiply the terms of YP by X over and over again until your solutions are linearly independent. So if this is the case, let me just write multiply by X, X squared, etc. It's much easier to see an example than, than just write it down. In most books you'll find uh, like a table that's that's impossible to read. So we'll we'll do some examples soon. Uh, that's that's a two. That's a two. Uh, so once you get past these these first two, these rather the second and third step, uh, it it becomes pretty easy. Uh, the fourth step is you plug after you have your YP, you plug YP into your DE, right? You just plug it into your differential equation and you find the constants, you find the coefficients, right? So you uh, find the coefficients and the fifth step is, well, to write the answer down. The solution to the differential equation is your complementary solution plus your particular solution. So this is the answer, this is your final, final solution. Okay, instead of making another video, let's just go ahead and look at uh, some examples of how you would find YP in this video. I think that, that could be a good idea. So let's suppose, I'll write form of YP, because this is the hard part. Once you get past this, uh, it's, it's really, really easy to do these. So let's say that the right-hand side is equal to 3. So that's the right-hand side of your differential equation. And in all of this, we're going to ignore... This is important. We're going to ignore the homogeneous solution. We're going to ignore y sub c, the complementary function or complementary solution. We're going to ignore that in, in, in these, these examples. So this is y sub p. In this case, y sub p would just be equal to a. Right? So what if you had 2x? In this case, y sub p would be equal to ax plus b. This is really important. Once once you get this down again, um, you're pretty much invincible in terms of undetermined coefficients. What if you had negative x squared plus 3? Well, that's a quadratic, so then you would need a quadratic. So y sub p equals ax squared plus bx plus c, right? So plus c. Uh, what if you had, say, e to the 2x? e to the 2x. So in this case, y sub p would be a times e to the 2x, right? a times e to the 2x. Uh, what if you had sine 2x? Now here's where it gets a little bit tricky. If you have sine 2x, you need to involve both, right? Sine and the cosine function. So it'd be sine 2x plus b cosine 2x. And you can do it backwards. You can put the cosine first. I just decided to put the sine first. What if you have something like this, x squared plus 4 e to the 3x. Well, in this case, it's a quadratic times an exponential, so it'd be ax squared plus bx plus c times e to the 3x, right, times e to the 3x. Uh, what if you had a polynomial, an exponential, and the trig function, so something ridiculous like x e to the negative x cosine 2x. So in this case, this is a degree 1 polynomial, right? So here y sub p would be, this is hard to write, ax plus b, that takes care of the polynomial. Then we have e to the negative x, and then sine 2x plus cx plus d, e to the negative x, cosine 2x. 
cosine two x. That's pretty ridiculous. I wouldn't want to differentiate uh, this guy, right? That's that's nuts. Uh, what if you had something like sine four x plus three? Well, in this case, y sub p. Well, first let's take care of the sine. So you would need a sine four x plus b cosine 2x. And then we need to take care of the 3, so plus c. All right, so that's how you find um, yp ignoring the homogeneous uh, solution. Let me see if I could scroll up. So let's go over these again. So if you have 3, then your yp is just a. Pretty easy. If you have 2x, this is degree 1, then you need a degree 1 polynomial. If you have a quadratic, then you need a quadratic. Again, this is ignoring the homogeneous solution. That complicates things. If you have just a single exponential, then you have an exponential. If you have just like a sine function, then you need, need to involve sine and cosine, right, both. Here we have a quadratic times e to the 3x. So here we have a quadratic times e to the 3x. Uh, this one is ridiculous. We have a degree one polynomial, e to the negative x, and the trig function. So because we have a trig function, we need to involve both cosine and sine. So we have the degree one polynomial, the exponential, and the sine. The degree one polynomial, the exponential, and the cosine. And then here, here we're adding three. So it's not like we're just gonna multiply by a constant, we're adding a constant. So this first piece here takes care of the sine four x, and this piece here takes care of the three. All right, so now for the really, really useful examples, the ones where we don't ignore the homogeneous solution. And it looks like I'm out of room, so I'll have to make another video uh, for that. So I'll try to do that. I hope this helps.